It's time to learn about our new UI view object. So we're going to go ahead and go to our storyboard and add another view object. Specifically, we're going to add a date picker. So we can go ahead and drag this into our project. And let's also add a button at the bottom of our project so that we'll be able to, when we press this button, capture the information from our date picker. So let's call this process date. And we'll be able to display this information or capture this information as an NS string and print that out to the console. So let's go ahead and hook these two items up. So I'm going to go ahead and alt click on my storyboard file, uh, excuse me, on my ccviewcontroller.h file. And we're going to go ahead and hook up our date picker. So this is going to be an outlet and we can call this date picker. And let's connect this up. And let's also hook up my button. So this is going to be an IB action. And we can make this an action. We'll call this process date button pressed and we'll make the type UI button touch up inside and the arguments will be sender. So let's go ahead and hook this up. We're going to go ahead in ccviewcontrol.m. I'm going to go back to single view and at the bottom here let's add some functionality to my method. So we're going to simply say when I press my date picker we're going to get an NS date object back. So we can say NS date date is equal to, and we're going to be able to access that information by saying date picker or self dot date picker dot date. Well, an NS date isn't really nice. We're not able to push that to a label or if we want to print that out, we want to format it first. So we have to create an NS date formatter object. So I'm going to create an NS date formatter object and we're going to call it formatter and we're going to allocate some memory for it and initialize it. And then we can set up our formatter. So we're going to say formatter, set date formatter. And we're going to set it up so it displays the year, the month, and the day. You can also display the time if you set up this formatter differently as well. But we're just going to do year, month, and day for now. So now we can get an NS string representation of this date by saying NS string, string from date is equal to formatter, and we're going to say string from date, and let's pass in our date. So we can go ahead and log this out, and we're going to log out the string from date. And let's run our program and see how this works. So let's go ahead and choose Wednesday. And we can press the process date. And we see 2013 11.13 prints out. So great, it's processed it by year, month, and date for us. And there's a few other things I want to show you with date. So it's also possible to get the current date so we can do nslog percent at sign and there's a method on nsdate and it's simply called date and this will give us the current date back and it looks like I have a little typo in here I forgot to use a capital L I used the lowercase accidentally and now let's go ahead and run this application and let's choose a different time for our date picker so we have something to compare here so I'm going to choose two days from now and we see the first one prints out as 2013-11-03 and that's my string representation. Now, because I just printed out an NS date object without formatting it, I also gain access to the current time as well. So we see that the NS date object we can print it out, but we've also seen how to convert an NS date object into an NS string. And this will be really useful when we want to display an NS date as a label or pass it around as an NS string object. There's one other method I want to show you for an NS string, and I'm going to say int. And we're going to say time interval, and we're going to say my date. Right? I have a date object that I'm getting from my picker, and we're going to be able to say time interval since 1970. And what this does is it in seconds it gives us the time interval or how many seconds have passed since January 1st, 1970, and we're going to be able to display that information by NS logging it here, and we can say time interval. And why am I showing you how to convert NS dates to integers or strings? Well, it's useful to figure out 
how to convert this data. Specifically, we're going to be able to convert an int, which we'll be able to see here. So this is the number of seconds that have passed since 1970. And if we need to do a comparison between two dates, we can figure out which date is older or which date is newer based on the time interval int, because we know how to compare two ints. So if I had two NS date objects, I could do that comparison. And this will come in really handy when you want to compare if two dates are older or less than a different date for our assignment.